Dragons Don't Date, Prince of the Other World's Story. Written by Cassie Lockhart. Narrated by Victoria May. Before you get angry, Damien, I just want to say that I think this is a good thing, Grimalkin told him, trotting along just ahead of him down the mansion's halls. Damien Blackwood's magically powerful cat and guardian since his childhood had been sitting outside his training gym, waiting for him to emerge, and was now escorting him back to his rooms. The little Siamese talked over his shoulder, whisking his smoke-colored tail back and forth. So promise me you'll give this a chance. Damien had just spent the last four hours fighting simulated unearthly monster attacks, and somehow that felt safer than whatever Grimm wanted now. Give what a chance, he asked, yanking his shirt off to blot sweat from his face and hair as he reached the door to his chambers, which was, oddly, already open. Grimm, let me in, Zack announced from inside. Ah, Damien thought, as Grimalkin conveniently disappeared. He finished pushing the door wide and found his werewolf best friend leaning against his bar, wearing a sharply tailored black suit, filling two glasses quickly with high-end whiskey. His hair was slicked back, then knocked artfully loose again, and Damien could scent a very faint hint of cologne. Zack looked like he'd just been profiled by Forbes magazine, whereas Damien looked like he'd just gotten back from a cage fight. Zack glanced up, took in his current half-dressed state, and laughed. This is exactly why I need you. For, Damien prompted, nearing. A really huge favor, Zack said, in a tone of voice that let Damien know he wasn't going to like it very much, Grimalkin's hopes aside. Damien groaned, taking the offered drink from Zack's hand, and took to one of the wide leather-backed chairs he had in his spacious living area. Dragon large, or human large? Zack took that as the opening that it was, following to sit down across from him. Human-sized, although it's funny that you mention the dragon thing, because it is dragon-adjacent. Damien watched Zack, picking up on familiar cues, and his eyes narrowed. Is one drink going to be enough for this? He asked, tilting his glass in Zack's direction. Probably not. Drink up, Zack admitted. Damien did as he was told and eyed his friend over the glass's rim as he went on. You know your Blackwood Industries has its finger in a lot of pies, right? The wolf went on. He nodded. He had delegated almost all of his business's operations over to Zack years ago, so that he wouldn't have to bolt from board meetings early to fight unearthly creatures as a dragon. Well, the latest entry into the profitable pie competition is a dating app. And as one of the most eligible bachelors in the world, I thought you could start a profile on it to help kick things off. Zack gave him a wolfish grin. If Damien had still been taking a sip, he would have just sprayed Zack with 1954 Glen Grant. And this is why Grimm had let Zack into his rooms, despite the issues his cat normally had with werewolves. His cat had recently become obsessed with him finding a mate. I'm not eligible because I'm half dragon, Zack. You know what we do and how we live. Here in his castle-like mansion, in magic-derived comfort, until the alarms rang and they went out to fight monsters intruding from other worlds. He frowned at his friend and shook his head. I literally cannot afford to be in meaningful relationships. And I'm not asking you to be in one. I'm just saying that if you were on our app, you could bring in a lot of interested women. If we took a picture of this, he said, waving his hand in Damien's direction, we'd already be profitable. And where women go, men go. It's science. So you want me to lie? Is that what you're saying? Zack took a large swig of his drink coughed and then held up his thumb and forefinger, pinching air. No, just to bend the truth, a little. Damien frowned. It's so distasteful. I'm just asking for a week, Damien. One week. You kill some monsters on the clock, you flirt with some women in your free time, we get our publicity stunt, and it's a done deal. Zack's eyebrows rose in hope. Come on, D. Help me? Grimalkin loves the idea. Need I remind you that Grimalkin's a cat? 
fine. Our shareholders love the idea, too. I bet they do. They're not the ones whoring themselves out. Hey, now, Zack said, leaning closer. If you ever start whoring yourself out, then as the manager of all your businesses, I get a 20% cut. Damien snorted. Fuck you. Is that a yes? Zack asked, taking another big gulp of whiskey. I think that's a yes. Damien sighed. He knew he actually did ask a lot of the man, and Zack hadn't actually signed on to run a billion-dollar company, although he'd grown into the corner office over time. Fine. You get one week, starting this very moment. Damien pulled his phone out of a pocket. What's it called? You're gonna love this, Zack said with a gleam in his eye. We're calling it Dating Dragon. Damien made an obligatory profile, using actual photos of himself. He had straight black hair, eyes that were a light enough brown that they looked gold, and an expression in most of them that looked either brooding or demanding, depending on how generous the viewer cared to be. That part was easy enough. He was at a bit of a loss as to how to fill in the blanks on the questions. What reality show would they make about you? One no one would believe in if they saw it, alas. Also, the crew would always be in danger of being eaten. Where was your most interesting vacation? On a pink sand beach beneath the second moon, listening to the frills sing to one another as the tide rolled in. Best day ever? The time I punched a Jorgian's heart out. Not metaphorically. I hit one so hard my arm went through its armor, and its heart flew out the other side. Favorite holiday? Mast day. What's the one thing you couldn't live without? Me, his dragon growled inside him before he could contemplate an answer. Oh, I could live without you just fine, he told it, before erasing everything he'd put in. It took an hour of canvassing the rest of his friends in his mansion, all of whom were supernatural in some way themselves and so had similar problems, and each of them greatly amused that he was doing this, until he'd come up with answers that were vaguely palatable to normal humans. Then, cursing Zack's name, he pushed save. For two days, two long, no attacks by unearthly monsters to distract him days, he used Zack's app. Women messaged him in droves, and he did his best to be polite to all of them, answering all of their, hey, how are you, style questions as kindly as he could, while dodging anything that felt too cruel. He neither sent nor accepted photos, and he made no promises in their chats. They told him about their lives, their work, their kids. He did break down and have Mills, his witch secretary, find out some of the women's financial situations and sent them money on the sly, but there was no way he would ever continue any of these relationships outside the app, or past even this first week. He never thought less of anyone for approaching him, as improbable as a true connection was. It was just that using the app was like holding a mirror up to his own loneliness. It was easy to see himself in their profiles, in their longing to be known and seen. A deeply hidden part of him knew exactly what that felt like but he knew he could never tell anyone who he was and what he did. And even if he could admit to being a dragon shifter who protected the earth from unearthly monsters, what human would ever possibly believe it? By the third day, he logged back on, frustrated by the entire thing, wanting nothing more than to crush his phone into a little ball and go find Zack to throw it at. Grimalkin hopped onto his desk to look down at the screen. So, have you found a mate yet? No, Grim, I have not, he turned his phone off. The mental image of his werewolf friend and cat collaborating to set him up with someone on the internet was almost too much to bear. Grim tilted his head up at Damien. Are you even trying? Rather than answer, Damien just gave a pained groan. Maybe, Grimalkin began, swatting at the phone, using his magic to turn it on and hop through its screens. You should just have fun with it. How can I? Damien asked. Zack wants me to perform like a dancing monkey inside this metal box. The longer he used the app, the lonelier he felt. No, Grimalkin said, pointing down with a furry paw. Zack once, 
D. Blackwood III to perform, but no one else says you need to be him all the time. You mean, lie? Like you're not lying now, Grimalkin said, peering at him with his crossed blue eyes. You're not telling any of the women on there anything true about you, Damien. Damien knew his guardian was right, and grunted, All right, let's see how many women we can scare off with next to absolute honesty, he said, taking his phone back from the cat to log off and open up a fresh account. Username, a difficult man, height over six feet, size overly muscled, favorite holiday, I don't really give a shit. Not surprisingly, his new profile was nowhere near as popular as his official one, especially because he didn't use any pictures. He scrolled through the women who were available online because it amused him to do so, and now that he wasn't Damien Blackwood, he felt much more like himself. One of the women who he matched with also had no photos on her profile which Zack had informed him yesterday, probably meant that she too was a man. That there were people out there wasting time and playing games with other people's feelings on these things baffled him. Why would anyone do this to themselves if they didn't have to? She, if she was a she, claimed to be Pool Girl 92. He rolled his eyes and messaged her. Hey, so are you lying on here too? To his surprise, she messaged back, Excuse me? I am reliably informed that most women on here who don't have photos are actually men. My username actually says I'm a girl. A likely story. He assumed that would be the end of it, but then it wasn't. Anyone ever tell you you're weird? You don't even know, he snorted. There was a long pause in which he pondered future responses and future ways Zack was going to repay him for this before his phone buzzed again. Was it going to take you that long to send me a dick pic or something? What? He typed in, blinking. No. Why? He asked and then read up. I'm not that kind of weird. Just an average annoying kind of weird then. One of his eyebrows rose. You're the one who reinitiated conversation. Hmm, I notice you also do not have photos, and that your username is not a lie. I decided recently to be more truthful. Well, it's rare that men are self-aware enough to acknowledge that they're difficult. They usually just expect the people in their lives to bend. Thank you, I think. You're welcome. So now, truth-telling stranger, just how is it that you're lying here? like you first asked me. I'm here under duress. Should I call 911 for you? Are you trapped in a basement by a serial killer and getting a date on this app is the only way out? Damien caught himself smiling at the screen. Yes, it's very dark. If I don't get a woman's number by midnight, they're going to chop off my hand. Oh, that's too bad. How would you type? He paused. He knew he shouldn't type what he wanted to type next, because it was too strong and possibly too strange, and who the hell knew who Pool Girl 92 really was besides. But it felt right. For you, I would find a way. Oh my gosh, Andy, just let me hook you up with someone, her roommate said, watching her type into her phone on the far end of their couch in their small apartment. I can find someone on my own, Sammy. I have all this awesomeness, she said, gesturing at herself. And all this technology. She waved her phone next. And I am entirely capable of figuring my own shit out. Sammy's face scrunched up as if in thought. Are you, though? She asked, her voice high. Shut up, Andy told her with a laugh. She was a few minutes out from needing to catch her bus to work her night shift at the hospital. She was already wearing scrubs, and her new friend on this dating app, dragon dating, how absurd, was saying he'd figure out a way to type to her one-handed, which could be some sort of weird masturbation metaphor, come to think on it. That's like sweet creepy, or creepy sweet, I haven't decided. Let me know when you do, he told her, still fearless and completely brash. A difficult man had balls, 
should give him that. Well, this has been fun and all, but I've got to get to work. Where do you work? Wouldn't you like to know, she said, and then turned the app off. Work was crazy in that way that only made sense to explain to other nurses. Even Sammy, who loved her, would sometimes start to back away slowly if she was too intense when she got home about what had happened overnight. So she kept her problems to herself, went into her rooms, and kicked off her dance goes. She was tempted to log on to the app just to see what, if, Mr. Difficult had said anything else to her. But she acknowledged that that was crazy. Because what if he had? And it had gone on to be creepy and disappointing. Or possibly worse yet, what if he hadn't? And he just ditched her like so many other people in her life. Not that three minutes of semi-witty conversation meant he was going to be a lifetime friend. She groaned at herself. Her overactive imagination was precisely why she shouldn't use dating apps. Ever. Blah. Andy stripped out of her scrubs, put on pajamas, and crawled into bed. It was easier not knowing for right now, she thought, and made herself go to sleep with her phone too far away to grab. Just as she was about to drift off, she heard Sammy screeching, Andy! from the hall. Andy leapt out of bed and raced into the hallway, certain her best friend was dying. Andy, there's a spider in my sink, you have to come and get it right now! She pulled up short at the doorway to Sammy's bedroom, where her red-haired roommate was precariously standing on the edge of her tub and pointing to the sink like it was a bad dog. What the hell, Sammy, Andy said, peering into the sink. The spider was only the size of a dime. If I wash it down, it's just going to crawl back out again, Sammy whined. It's a good thing I love you, you wuss, Andy said. She used one hand to chase it into her other palm. Go get the door? Sammy leapt off the tub and bolted. Andy heard all three of their latches on their apartment unlock. Then Sammy sprinted back to retake a perch atop their couch in the living room. Andy resisted laughing, barely, and deposited the spider on the stoop outside, watching it scurry off before dusting her hands on her thighs and returning indoors. What would you do if I hadn't been home? She asked her roommate. Shoved a protective towel under the door, Sammy said with a pout, stepping down. Or fumigated the entire place like that one time. Yeah, yeah, I remember, Andy grinned and shook her head. Their apartment had smelled like chemicals afterwards for weeks. Okay, she warned, heading back down to her bedroom. After this, I'm on Ambien, full disclosure. And somehow, back in her room, she avoided the temptation of picking her phone up yet again. Barely. Andy woke up in the afternoon better rested, and somehow the thought of logging onto a dating app didn't fill her with existential dread. When she did, she found two messages already waiting there for her. I don't actually want to know where you work, by the way. I do acknowledge that that was too much. It's just sometimes hard to make conversation. She took a long moment, deciding if she would respond. He was definitely strange. But on the plus side, he hadn't sent her a dick pic or insinuated anything of the sort, like 99.99% of the guys on most apps. He also hadn't asked her for a photo yet, which was good, because in her experience, being an Asian girl on a dating site was tantamount to ringing the dinner bell for weirdos. Fair, Mr. Difficult, she typed and sent. How is the basement treating you? Thirty minutes later, when she was eating cereal in bed with a book balanced on one knee, she saw her phone flash with a response. I got a number just in time. Did you now? Yes. Soccer lover 1985 saved my life. But now they're dating a serial killer, I fear. Poor them, Andy sent and laughed. So how was work? He asked her. She squinted at the screen, not sure how much was safe to share. Hooray for being a woman on the internet. She set her cereal bowl down on her nightstand to type more easily. Particularly worky. How was yours? Eh, uh, not very much of it currently, unfortunately. So you're a freelancer? You could say that. Oh well, 
At least that gives you time to chat on dating apps all day. Are you kidding? This is my version of hell, he messaged, then regrouped. Present company excluded, of course. Andy laughed again. Gee, thanks. Seriously, though, how do people do this? She blinked at her screen. It beats bars if you're lazy. Also, if you're too old for bars. Her thumbs hesitated, but then she typed out. How old are you? Older than you, he responded quickly. How do you know? I can tell. With your old man radar, she teased. Something like that, yes. So you're an older, out-of-work freelancer who hates technology. You sound like a real catch. You'd be surprised. Always so cocky. Andy rolled her eyes at herself, because hadn't she been interested in enough assholes in her life? But then he went on before she could make a witty retort. Actually, pool girl 92, I am the opposite of a catch. My pride requires that I tell you that I don't have any problems finding women under real life circumstances. But as you've intuited, my name doesn't lie, and my life doesn't lend itself to the kind of stability that most people crave. Andy tilted her head while reading her screen. The anonymity of it all made her braver than she might otherwise be. I have to say that this whole self-awareness thing is really a turn-on, unless you're just playing me. She could tell that he was typing for a very long time on the other side, considering and deleting his words, before responding with, I never play. You do realize that's exactly what a player would say, right? Hmm. So in order to earn your trust, I need to prove a negative. That's a difficult task. Possibly impossible, she granted, and added, and honestly, yeah, if this is where you check out to go chat with more available women, then so be it. There was another long pause where even though she'd basically brushed him off and absolved him, she had a strange feeling he was still staring at his phone. I enjoy challenges, pool girl. Not flippant games, mind you, but true challenges intrigue me. After all, challenging is just another word for difficult. He went on, but it's my turn to need to go, though. I'll chat with you tomorrow. Andy stared at her phone, rereading his messages. She had the oddest sensation that, despite the gulf between them, and neither of them knowing anything real about the other, that there was something there. You left your phone at home. Grimm's tone was accusatory the second Damien came in his bedroom door and headed for his closet to unload gear. So, he asked the cat. He'd been out killing unearthly monsters with his team. It wasn't like he was in any danger, and like they didn't all have phones. You've been gone for almost two days, Grimmelkin said, his tail pointing straight up. I know, Grimm. I didn't want to be distracted. Which was true. Having to go far afield and leaving his phone at home was one way out of getting his arrangement with Zack, their shareholders be damned, and also distancing himself from temptation. Which didn't stop him from almost borrowing Mill's phone and downloading the app onto it and messaging pool girl regardless. Then he realized how foolish he was being, going out of his way for someone when he didn't even know their real name, or them his. Well, I didn't want you to miss this opportunity, so I sent her some photos on your behalf. Damien paused, letting the duffel bag he was holding drop with a clunk to the closet floor. Photos of, he asked with deliberate slowness. Myself, Grimm said with a whisk of his tail. I went in disguise as an all-black cat with green eyes. His guardian changed forms to show him, just so. Did she actually want pictures of you? Damien said, striding over to where he'd left his phone and picking it up quickly. Everyone wants pictures of me, Damien, Grimalkin chided, turning back to Siamese. Andy knew better than to read things into Mr. Difficult Silence, but she also spent more time that night at work than she would have liked, 
wondering if he was going to text her back. If his wife or his girlfriend or his mistress wouldn't catch hold of his phone and scold him, or with her luck, maybe he'd just go and get hit by a train. And then when she got up the next day and he still hadn't messaged, yeah. She didn't know why she'd gotten her hopes up, over somebody who might as well have been imaginary no less. She just had. It had been fun to think about for a bit, was all. Just getting to feel that little tickle of maybe. Maybe he's handsome. Maybe he's good in bed. Maybe he's the one. And she knew better. So, so, so effing better than to hope for any of those things. But she still couldn't help it. She'd read too many books with happy endings. And she was just a hopeful person. It was her default setting. It had to be. It was the only way she could manage after her mom died, her brother kept causing her trouble, and because her work was grim. If she didn't hope, she didn't have anything. Even if hoping, sometimes, most times, led to disappointment. And then, he sent her a photo of a very nice-looking black cat lounging in a sunbeam. No commentary before, no commentary after. Just a cat photo. Not even when she messaged him in return with three question marks. Was this his way of proving that he wasn't a player? A meta-commentary on catfishing on the internet? Or just that he was really very odd? The next day, he sent another cat photo, this time of the same cat sleeping on the couch. And while part of her was pissed, the rest of her laughed it off. At the very least, she now had a weird dating story to share with Sammy. And later that second night, he messaged her for real. Sorry about the delay. I caught a job. A likely story, she thought, rather than texted. My work is important, he went on, but it fucks with my life sometimes. It would have been so easy to just leave it there, but she couldn't help herself. So much so that you don't have time to message, but you do have time for cat photos? She messaged him quickly. I'm sorry, my cat sent those. Andy snorted at her phone. He did, did he? With his little opposable thumbs? He claimed everyone wanted to see photos of him and took some initiative. Andy gawked at her phone, wondering if Mr. Difficult had the world's driest sense of humor, or if he was just certifiably insane, as he went on, he's by far the more handsome of the two of us. I try not to tell him that, though. I don't want him getting a big head. She exhaled in a rush. Humor so dry you could use it as a bath towel in a hurricane, she thought, then typed, I hope you know you're being ridiculous. Did she like the photos? Grim asked him. Yes, shh, Damien said, sitting down on his bed and gently pushing Grim aside. He'd expected only to be apologizing to her and her to probably never respond. But he had, and she hadn't. This was his opportunity to leave gracefully if he was going to. All he had to say was, yes, you're right. Let's never talk again and delete his account. His week with Zach was through. He could delete this app entirely. But he was compelled to keep interacting with her. It was like he was a moth and she was a flame. He just couldn't stay away. I am ridiculous on occasion, pool girl, he confessed. And speaking of ridiculous things, I've been trying to figure out how to show you that I'm not a player. Just a man who occasionally has too much free time and not enough human interaction to fill it with. At least you have a lovely cat, though. I bet you do, too, so to speak. Although I suspect the rest of you is lovely as well. The dots on her end spun furiously before she messaged him. Did you just kind of make a pussy joke? Yeah, I did, he admitted. She sent over an emoji of her eyes rolling heavenward. Just when things were going so well, Mr. Difficult. Well, see, I've been forced to spend the intervening days here thinking about what would possibly be a player 
versus what would actually be just me. And so, while I am not a player, I won't be made a liar by pretending that I'm as neutered as my cat. Grimm reappeared beside him. I'm not neutered, Damien, the cat grumbled. It's a metaphor, Damien said, then spun his hand for the door. Out. Only if you admit the photos were a good idea. They were. Now out, Damien said. He needed his full concentration and a little less cat input. For what, if anything, would happen next? Are you really just looking for friends on here? He asked her, or would you rather be talking to someone with an intimate knowledge of female anatomy and what to do with it? There was a long pause before her response. Both, if that's an option. If that's not like some kind of unicorn. He grinned at his screen. Oh my God, pool girl. If you don't want me to make dirty jokes, you need to use animals that are less horny. You're kind of a jerk, she said, with another eye roll emoji. I am, but I'm a jerk who is thinking about things he'd like to do to you. Things that you'd enjoy. Things he'd already been thinking about if he was honest with himself. He stared at his phone, knowing he was coming on way, way, way too hard. Sorry for being so forward. It's just when I come off of a job, there's a lot of adrenaline. So what are you, a surgeon or a stuntman? Neither. But if you're willing to give me some time, pool girl, I can make it worth your while to find out. Andy swallowed while looking at her phone, perched on her bed. She owed this stranger nothing, but that was part of the appeal. He didn't know her. He wasn't going to tease her about it later. He wasn't going to stalk her because all she'd have to do to ditch him was hop offline. But he was interested in her, and if he could actually deliver on one half of his confidence quotient, well, that might be fun. Because she wasn't spayed either. All right, but you only get five messages to convince me, Mr. Difficult. Oh, no. Now it's just like I'm trapped in this serial killer's basement again. That's one she threatened on her side. And I suppose this is two. So after this, I'll just be down to three, he sent over. And she could almost feel him taking the control of the situation back from her. She decided not to comment, waiting quietly while the dots spun. Three messages don't leave much time for romance, so I suppose I'll treat them like wishes from a genie's lamp. First, I wish that you were here on my bed, naked with me, so that I could have my way with you. I can be more gentle than you'd think, and I would start by spending my time exploring. Would you rather kisses or bites? Which part of you is more sensitive, your neck or your breast? I would want to know what you tasted like, from the salt between your fingers to the sweet between your legs. And even though it was just words, Andy felt herself getting flustered. Then she was embarrassed by that. It hadn't been that long since she'd gotten laid. But she also hadn't really been explored either, like she was an unknown country or a hidden secret. The thought of it made her anxious and fluttery, and even if she knew it was just pretend, she wanted him to go on. My second wish would be that you would tell me what you wanted. I would read you, yes, I would trace my eyes over you like you were a book, move my hands over you like you were marble I longed to carve. But I have never wanted a quiet woman. I want you to tell me how it feels when I am fucking you, when you want more, and how much more you can take. And when I make you too breathless for true words, I will listen to every gasp and moan, following its instruction, until you have to shout my name. Andy bit her lips, quietly staring at her screen. My third wish would be to make you come, with my fingers, with my tongue, with my cock. I want to feel you shudder beneath me. I want to feel you grab me from inside. I want to watch you lose control of yourself over and over again for me. 
until you almost can't stand it anymore, until you're exhausted and horrors stand. Andy waited, blinking at the screen. That was the end of the message. Had it just stopped? If he sent her another cat photo, she was going to kill him. Can I just take you out and prove that I'm not playing? His message was like someone pulling an emergency brake, plus a fire alarm, plus a bucket of ice cold water. Andy blinked herself free of the hold his words had had on her, and wasn't sure what she was going to say, except for the obvious. I think I already know you're not a player, Mr. Difficult. How so? Because people on apps don't take you out. They meet up for coffee. And also, they usually wait a lot longer, because most people on here have 40 windows open. Unless they just want to hook up. But then you'd have sent me dick pics instead of cats. Andy's head twisted as she looked at her phone, realizing just what that meant. This really is the first time you've tried doing this, isn't it? Where this meant actually give a shit what someone on this app thought of him, then yes, because none of those other chats with those women had counted. They'd all wanted the Damien the outside world got to see. Whereas this here with Pool Girl felt private, like it could mean something. It is, Damien admitted, and if you are as beautiful as you are smart, I would be a lucky man. So now that you vaguely trust me, or at least in my ab virginity, coffee? He stretched out on his bed, holding the phone up on his chest, watching the dots whirl as he waited for her thoughts, and couldn't resist sending one more message. Unless you have forty other men to consult first, and then I suppose I'll wait my turn. But I can guarantee you one thing, pool girl, none of them will be as interesting as me. Just when he was sure that he'd pushed it too far, a message popped up. There is 140, but yes, apparently I'm still free tonight. I'll be at Jones and Shaw by seven. There is no hesitation on his end. Then I'll meet you there, he sent, closely followed by, how will I know it's you? I'll be reading a book. I have long black hair. What about you? He grinned at the screen. Trust me, you'll know me when you see me and logged off. Damien stared at his now blank screen, and it wasn't that his confidence evaporated, so much as that reality pressed in. Why on earth, or any other unearthly realm, had he felt compelled to ask her out? It didn't make any sense, but he definitely wanted to. He licked his lips and wondered if Zack had somehow infused the app with magic, which he would be immune to, but it would help him to understand why he'd decided to meet her. He didn't know anything about her, other than that she was sassy and kind. Who else would take pity on someone as clueless on this metal thing as he was? And he hadn't lied to her yet. Not even once, because the serial killer basement thing had obviously been a joke. He glanced at his clock. He had 30 minutes before meeting her downtown plenty of time to rationally talk himself out of it, and then back into it again. Because he wanted to. He was definitely going to see her. He got up and went into his closet to pull on nicer clothes and grab a hoodie to hide his face with. Well, Grimalkin asked him, hopping back up on his bed as he returned. I'm going to go meet her. Grimalkin licked a paw and looked smug. I told you. Everyone loves cat photos. Jones and Shaw Coffee was downtown, so he'd had to park a few blocks away and walk over with his hood up. He was glad she hadn't asked for photos first. If she had, then his entire game would be up. He knew he was recognizable, unfortunately. He'd spent the drive down from his castle contemplating just why he was doing this to himself. It's simple, his dragon told him with amusement. It makes you feel alive. We've chased all sorts of women before, he complained. None of them had had an effect on him like this, though. Then perhaps it is the mystery, his dragon told him, moving to take up more room inside. Perhaps, he agreed. Go back to sleep and miss this 
the beast inside him laughed. I think not. Damien growled and then made his way down the block. Jones and Shaw had wide glass windows, which made it easy to see inside. He slowed his pace down as he neared, scanning their glass, looking for her, and there, in the corner, a petite woman with long, dark hair. Her back was mostly to the glass, but she was angled enough for him to see she was reading a book as promised. He came twenty steps nearer, never once looking away. He saw her turn a page, take a sip of her drink, and he realized that there was a seat opposite her, one that she'd saved, despite the coffee shop's evening crowd, for him. All he had to do to meet her was walk on inside. And he was going to. A feeling of lightness suffused him. Something about being here just felt right. And then his phone buzzed. He pulled it out of his pocket, spared it a glance, and found a text from Mills. Massive rift opening, all hands on deck, along with a nearby location. Damien glanced back at Pool Girl 92 behind the glass. He was tempted to pretend he hadn't gotten Mills' message, but there was no way he could leave the rest of his crew in danger not when they might need the dragon inside him for the fight. His phone buzzed again, and he knew it'd be a fresh message from Mills just for him to make sure he'd heard. So all he could afford was one more moment of sweet, if distant, normalcy. Watching pool girl turn another page, wondering if she was thinking about him nervously or with anticipation, the same way that he'd been thinking about her. Whatever the case, though, he sighed. She deserved better than a man who couldn't tell her the truth about why he'd stood her up. He swiped the screen of his phone on and hopped into the app. Sorry, pool girl. This isn't going to work. Good luck with your swimming. He typed out in a rush, hit send, and then crushed his phone in one hand, throwing it away in the nearest trash can. He gave one last look over his shoulder and then walked back to his car. Andy squirmed a bit in her seat with her phone in front of her, hidden by the book she was just pretending to read. There were a lot of people here, and Mr. Difficult could be any of them. Why the hell hadn't she made him tell her even one defining quality? Then her phone beeped and she looked down. Sorry, pool girl. This isn't going to work. Good luck with your swimming. It's not that kind of pool, she typed back quickly but the green dot by his name went out before she could hit send. Stood up again. Why did she keep doing this to herself? Stupid app, stupid hoping, stupid men. She looked around then, curious if he'd at least made it downtown, and maybe he was watching her. No one else in the kitschy coffee shop was looking at her. She turned in her seat to look out the window behind her, was he outside? But no one else out there looked guilty of just having crushed the teeny blossom of hope inside her heart either. Although there was a man walking away from the shop. He looked like he had a purpose, someplace else to be. He was taller than everyone else on the street, and his shoulders were more broad, too. He paused at the end of the block, looking back, and while she couldn't see his face, she felt certain it was him. A difficult man, living up to his name. He turned the corner and disappeared. Excuse me, is this seat taken? Asked someone on her right. She glanced up. The man asking was one of the technology guys that worked downtown. She would have known from his outfit, even if he hadn't still had his company lanyard on. It said his name was Josh. I was saving it for someone, she said with a shrug and heaved a sigh. But you might as well sit down. This has been Dragons Don't Date, Prince of the Other World's Story. Written by Cassie Lockhart. Narrated by Victoria May. Copyright 2020 by Cascara Press. Production copyright by Cascara Press.